All right, hello everybody. Been a little bit since I've made any posts, but I wanted to uh, to get something out here. Um, we've uh, had a lot of issues with uh, the garden this spring and into early summer, and finally think we've got it uh, together. But I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about these tomato cages uh, that I promised to post on. Uh, here you can see uh, these tomato cages are not your average tomato cage. These bad boys are seven feet tall. They're made out of road mesh. Uh, really cheap to make. Sturdy as all get out. These things will not bend. They will not fall over. I mean, you can see just the gauge of the wire. It's, uh, it's a really thick, heavy wire. Um, and we're going to show you how to make these here in a minute. Uh, but just wanted to kind of show you how they look. Now I know ordinarily you shouldn't be installing tomato cages after your plant's already established. You should put them in right away um, with your plant. Um, I did not. Um, that was a mistake on my part. But I know where the roots are. I know where everything is. So I feel that I can install these um, well without any issues. The only thing going into the ground is this green um, fence post that I purchased. They're only about $5 a piece at Lowe's. And uh, so I purchased just these and that's going in the ground right there. Now I know that the root roots on this plant and the main stem, I'm not sure if you can see the main stem down inside there. It's right here. Anyway, the roots and the main stem, I did a horizontal planting on it. I'll explain that later, but the, the main stem goes this way. So, and the roots are going out from there. So I'm pretty safe putting the post right here. Now ordinarily you wouldn't know that because the roots can spread out, but the way I have the horizontal going from right to left, um, I should be safe there. So, um, sorry about the mess of hose down there. It's a soaker hose I'm going to install as well. Uh, soaker hose is, is much better than applying water to the top of the plant and getting water all over the leaves. It can promote disease, fungus. Um, also, it allows you to water a little bit during the day if you prefer. Um, I, I don't prefer I usually do morning or evening. Usually better for the morning. And uh, but the soaker hose just applies water directly to the ground. It does, and it's a good slow soak, as opposed to a quick burst of water that a lot of it may try not drain off. So, anyway, um, that's it. Uh, things are finally starting to grow, so pretty happy about that. I'm going to sign off here, and we're going to start with the process of building a cage, so you can see it. Thanks. Alright, so here's my trusty sidekick, William. He's going to show us how to do things. Um, so we have this uh, piece, piece of 7, uh, 84 inch by 42 inch road mesh. So that's 7 feet by, um, what is that, 3.5 feet. And that's what we're going to start off with. But we got to cut it down. We, we can't use it that large. So we do have to cut some pieces. So uh, we're going to move right along to that. Here, but I want you to see the sheets of road mesh that you're going to buy. Usually you're going to find that in the concrete and uh, lumber section of your big box stores. It's the only place I could really find it regularly, so I don't normally like to go there, but uh, I like to, you know, like to support the local hardware stores and local florists, but it's the only place I could find this stuff. So, all right, William, let's uh, get it ready to do some cutting. Okay, so this is really the only tool you're going to need. Um, you may need to buy this. This is not anything that you would typically have um, at home, but maybe you do. Um, this is a pair of wire cutters, not your standard wire cutters. Your little uh, needle nose uh, wire cutters will not cut this gauge. It is too thick. I tried it. I went and got a couple different types of tools at the hardware store and would not do it. This is the one um, that will cut it. So you're going to want to look for something like this. It's kind of a middle range. It's not the big huge bolt cutters, um, but it's certainly not uh, any sort of wire, little wire cutters. So William's going to start cutting this. Um, what we've got here, you can see there's seven squares from top to bottom. I have this on its side right now. So that's, that's the, it's on its side and there's seven squares from top to bottom. Each section that we're going to use is only going to be three squares. So William's going to cut um, right at the third square. So William, go ahead and start here. And he is wearing, he's wearing protective gloves. He does have glasses on. Would definitely recommend that you wear safety goggles if you do not. Uh, William, we're going to start right here, buddy. Right there. And so you're going to go ahead and cut. 
right there. So you can do this. I mean, uh, uh, ladies can do this, no problem. Don't be intimidated by it. I got a little scrawny 12-year-old uh, boy doing this right now. William, flash the guns. What? Flash the guns. There you go. So if he can do it, you can do it. So all we're doing is cutting along here now. Probably what I'll end up doing. Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom there, bud. I know. There you go. Now you can see, the reason why we're wearing gloves is there's a, you know, when we're cutting these, it's going to leave a little bit of a sharp edge on it. And it's rusty. Well, it's rusty, but that's the way it's going to be. So just be careful with those sharp edges when you are cutting these. I'm going to bring it a little closer to you. There you go. So you can see, again, we're cutting this... Uh, uh, right next to the edge of the of the horizontal. Get it all the way down. There you go. All right. So go ahead and take that other piece over. That piece is done now. That's going to be one of our sections of the triangle. And now. You can see what it's going to leave you. Put it on the ground. It's going to leave you those long tines on the end. We need to cut those off too so that we also have another three section piece. It's a little three square piece. So, William, if you would be so kind. Yep. Now, if you, William, pick those ones up that I fell in the grass. Uh, we do not want to run over those at the lawnmower. Oh, yeah. That would uh, do some damage. Yeah. So we're trying to do this on the patio as much as possible. It's a beautiful night out here. So I didn't want to do it inside. Get out and enjoy the fresh what air. What are doing inside? All the monopies are going to be all over the place. By the way, each one of these pieces of road mesh, only $7.25. It takes one and a half pieces of road mesh to make this kit. And you can make it shorter if you want. If seven feet's too tall for you, that's fine. You can cut off some of the sections on the top so you can reduce the height. No problem. You take it down to a five foot section. But I've got some pretty big tomato plants that with properly fertilized, which I'm now doing and we'll talk about that later. Um, these plants can get to be over eight feet tall, sometimes even ten feet tall. So I wanted to have something that would support and not be toppling over the top of the tomato cage. Besides the ones you buy in the store, um, we'll talk about this later, but they uh, do not store well, and they are wiry, and they will they will topple over a good wind. So I wanted to have something good and strong and sturdy. If you're gonna grow tremendous tomato plants like I plan to, all right, William, go ahead and take this and put it in the pile. Let me take the tool from you. Thank you. Yep. Go put it in the pile, and then we're gonna start lashing these together. All right, be right back while we put them together. Okay, so again, it helps if you have your little trusty helper. Um, you can't keep, you can't have him. He's mine. Um, and what I did is I took two of those little sections that we cut, and I've got lamb laying next to each other on their uh, on their on the long side. And William here is holding the pieces together so I can lash them together. Um, now I'm going to be using is just some basic hemp rope um, that we're going to tie around. I'm not going to tie it completely tight because these things will need to be able to open and expand. We're going to turn it into basically a big triangle. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you the after. Um, guys, I'm not going to be able to hold this and, uh, and tie it at the same time. Yeah, well, so I, I can hold it. Well, no, you got to hold, the, you gotta hold the, the thing here. It's already stuck. So, all right, be right back. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've gone ahead and did a couple loops around the around the the two. Um, well, it's going to become a hinge basically, and then I did a, a knot up here. Oops, sorry, you weren't seeing it. A knot up here, and you can see I didn't tighten it all the way down. It's just basically a couple square knots put on top of each other, and and I didn't tie it all the way down, so it gives a little bit of a gap. So that when you're we're putting it on your plant and, and you're opening it up, it uh, it will uh, it will give you a little bit of room, but it's still going to hold the, the cage together. It's not going to fall apart. It's going to be solid, uh, and it's not going anywhere. It 
I'm going to trim off the tabs here just so they don't have all that dangling out there. Trim those off and basically I'm just going to do it about once every two or three squares up the length of the, uh, the, length of the cage and that's going to be um, one hinge. Then I'm going to connect another uh, one of the other side, one of these sides down here to another piece. Uh, another another section that I have over there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, attach that down to this open edge down here. And that will give me three sides of my triangle. Now I'm not going to go ahead and connect the third piece to the to the other side because I need to have it open to put it around the plant. Uh, we'll we'll uh, attach those once we have it uh, in place. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do all the tying now and uh, you'll see the finished product. Thanks. Okay, so here's the finished product. You can see, you, well, you can't really tell. There's actually three sections here. Um, we'll go ahead and open it up here real quick. Sorry. Okay, so here we are. So we've got three sections. You can see that they're tied together. Just simple ties. It makes it so much easier. I saw a video out here before by somebody else, and uh, they had actually snipped these ends off they took this this vertical bar off then they had taken this horizontal piece and used some heavy duty pliers and were like twisting it around so it could go around this vertical piece on the other on the other set on the other section and and then he was clamping them together and I did that on my first one and I gotta tell you it was a pain in the in the patootie it was a pain in the rear uh, so I just thought you know what I'm just gonna snip those off and I'm just going to tie them together with some hemp and uh, some hemp rope and it, uh, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So essentially what we're going to do is we'll just take this piece, we'll just turn it around. It's hard to do this with just one hand here. Okay. I apologize. You got it? Yeah. Okay, William, can you grab the other side and fold it in? Yeah. Grab the other end. Yep. Lift it, pull Still it together. No, 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 no. Don't, don't fold all the way together. I just want to make the triangle. Oh, yep. So just connect those pieces right there. So there we go. That's essentially what you're going to end up having is a triangle around the plant. And all I did was secure two sides. I left this third side open so that I can put it around the plant since uh, I'm installing these after they've already been established. Shame on me. Um, but then in the end, at the in the fall, all I have to do is just snip, snip this rope here on one side and open up the cage and then all I have to do is William if you let it go here for a second can you can you film yeah there you go all right go ahead and film get your fingers out of the way all you have to do is take this fold it over top of each other like so and it'll lay flat it'll lay flat in your garage not like those other cages which will actually uh, you know take up a lot of space those big hoops and they're certainly not as sturdy as this. Uh, they're not as tall as this. All in all, I spent, let's see, it takes one and a half sections of this, of this mesh, which comes out to, which is about $7.25 a piece. So one and a half sections figure about $10, $10.50 um, for one cage. Um, a couple pennies in rope, and that's it. Uh, now, I did, I did buy a bar. I just wanted this one. It's, it was five dollars. So all in all, fifteen, sixteen dollars for one of my tomato cages. That's going to last a lifetime. It's going to be able to accommodate every single type of tomato plant I want to. I want to put in there. It's never going to fall over. It's just insane. And uh, you know, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, or even some of the some of the uh, your local garden stores. They sell a heavier duty tomato cage. It's not as heavy duty as this. And it's maybe four and a half feet tall. That sucker's thirty-five dollars. Fifteen, yeah, fifteen, sixteen dollars. Way taller, way more sturdy, and it folds flat, and uh, it'll last your lifetime. It's not gonna look as pretty. Yes, it does have rust on it. No, I'm not gonna spray paint it and do all of the other kind of stuff. It's just sitting outside. It's not pretty. It's functional and it's economical. So there you go. Now let's go see these bad boys installed. Alright guys, finished product. 
We've got our four cages installed. Again, I don't recommend you doing it this late. This is part of my learning process. Um, I did it too late. I got a little lazy. Was worried more about the garden and the plant health. It was not doing very well at all. Uh, turns out the garden soil, the special, uh, the special rich garden soil with compost and manure that I bought from a local uh, landscaping uh, company turned out to be a major dud. Um, there was nothing in it. Um, everything was light green. Everything was small. Uh, it's not anywhere close to what I've seen around here. And I tested the soil. I went out to our local organic shop and you know they suggested that was probably very low in nitrogen and calcium. I brought home a home test kit. Sure enough, I, it registered nothing. Um, it, there was no no change in the test whatsoever from the control, and uh, I was pretty uh, pretty upset. Um, called that company up, and they have not responded to me. So I will not be doing business with them ever again, and I will not recommend them ever again. Uh, so all that being said. Um, now that uh, I have added some proper nutrients to the soil, I'm going to do some testing again after it's settled in a little bit more. Uh, but uh, um, my plants have grown to about three times the size they were a week ago. I'm not even kidding. It's amazing what happens when you've actually got nutrients in the soil. Um, these are four different tomatoes plants. Uh, this is my... Uh, this is my... What is this? Oh yes, this is my mortgage lifter. It gets huge fruits. Uh, we've got one on there right now that's got a head start on all the others. It's pretty massive. Um, pretty excited about that one. Lots of buds all of a sudden. Um, again, amazing what happens when you've got proper nutrients in the soil. Uh, this is my brandy wine. It doesn't have any fruit on it yet. It's just now starting to flower, but it's gotten huge. Um, much, much better, much healthier. This is my Cherokee Purple. It's, uh, it's an heirloom tomato. I know, I know, uh, heirlooms are very, they're much more prone to disease than your hybrids that are out there right now. So just be wary. Um, if you go buy an heirloom, much more prone to, to disease, but you can see the color on there, looking good. Looking healthy. I don't even see any insect damage to it right now. Uh, just growing huge. Tons of buds on this one right now. So I'm hoping I get some bees in there to actually uh, pollinate some. Then over here, I've got a Super 100. It's a cherry tomato. I'm not sure if you can see these, but uh, we're already getting some little greenies, greenies in there. Got some more over here. So pretty excited about that. You can see them down in there. There we go. Oh, and I did want to point out, the reason I'm using road mesh as opposed to all the other types of chains, chain link that's out there, um, all kinds of fencing that you can use, blah, 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 blah. Uh, two, two, two words. Huge hands. And these things are wide enough for me to get my hands in, to manipulate the plant, to move things around, to work this up, you know, as I need to, to go in and harvest my fruit. Uh, there's plenty of room in there. So that's why I really wanted that road mesh. Plenty of room. A lot of me to do my, do my thing. Uh, just another quick little, little bit. I've got uh, broccoli growing here. These plants were just dinky a week ago. And look at them now. I mean, they're huge. While well, they're getting there. Uh, I've already got a little broccoli head right there. That's nice. My pepper plants, they're not doing so good. Um, I think, I, I don't know, they, they were really suffering a week ago. Uh, they just, I don't know, there just wasn't anything in there. And uh, so they're pretty dinky. They've got some insect damage. Um, they're just, they were sickly, uh, not able to fend off disease. So we'll see what they end up doing. Um, and then we got some onions down there. They're not doing so great either. Uh, this all came from poor preparation on my part in the very beginning. I should have tested my soil before I put anything in, and I did not. And yes, I can help them now, but they're not going to be as big or as strong or have as much fruit as they could have um, had, I, had I tested. And I should have done that. So let that be known. I, I said I wanted to post the good, the bad, and the ugly. So there's the ugly. Uh, then we've got my strawberries. Again, I'm still kind of working on this soaker hose thing here. Um, we are pruning the flowers off of these this year. I would love to get some flower, some some fruit this year, but it's not going to. Uh, it's not going to. I really want this plant to get big and strong and start to get some sister plants off of daughter plants. I mean, you can see some uh, some of them coming off there. So 
Uh, so we'll just try to get those to set up really good and be ready for next year and get some big juicy berries. This is an ever bearing. Um, then we've got uh, then we've got my my pole beans and I might have overestimated what I needed to put in here, but oh well, you live and you learn. But here's my trellis. You can see just more of those fence posts, five bucks at Lowe's and Home Depot. And I just put my twine in between the two little uh, between the little uh, knobs there, which worked out perfectly. And and you can see they're starting to really grow. Um, a week ago, these things were only oh they were they weren't even to the first rope. They were not even to the first rope. I'm not even kidding you. And now look at them in a week. Let me back up a little bit so you can see just how far how far they've grown. So they're starting to work their way up the trellis real nicely, the beans. I also have a cucumber hiding in there. Probably shouldn't have put them so close, but oh well. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm, I'm just glad to see things growing. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, marigolds, just to try to for insect control. The basil I did plant in between each of those plants purposefully. The tomatoes, uh, they say that it helps to keep away the uh, uh, the giant hornworm, which is a major eater of tomato plants. They will strip your plant bare in a day, one one in, little caterpillar. So uh, they say the basil helps, marigolds help. So And then they also say the basil helps the flavor of your tomatoes uh, if you plant them really close to it. So I put one basil plant between each one, and those have really come back really nice and strong. I might have planted these a little bit too close. Again, you live and you learn, and uh, I'll be better off next year uh, with this. So, uh, anyway, that's it for right now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, the quick little tutorial on the on the cages. Uh, I'll keep you updated on how well they do, and uh, we'll see. All right, guys, take care.